Typically, and as most people see it, artists are a bit odd. They're a little different than everyone else. Artists themselves like to put this down to superior intellect, but this may be a bit overly optimistic. Still, whatever the case may be, artists tend to have a different slant on things. Museums around the world are filled with art by artists of different types and persuasions. The art reveals the artist's insights and musings. Some of the paintings are bizarre, some common, but they all hold the seeds of the artists who made them. And to be sure, part of the charm and profundity of these paintings comes from the artist's unusual take on life. Of course, the great art of the past holds concepts and emotions. Over time, the concepts and emotions emphasized by the artists tend to change. And of course, styles also change as artists of new eras investigate different methods. Yet particularly with Western approaches to making art, one thing is supremely important no matter when the art is done. And that thing is personal voice. When we speak about great art, we tend to describe that art by using the artist's name. We say, that's a Rembrandt. That's a Monet. That's a Gauguin. That's a Frankenthaler. A Nevelson a Georgia O'Keeffe, a Roy Lichtenstein, a Willem de Kooning. I get freer. I feel I'm getting more to myself in the sense of I have all my forces. I hope so, anyhow. I have this sort of feeling that I am all there now. It's not even thinking in terms of one's limitations because they have to come naturally. I think whatever you have, you can do wonders with if you accept it. When we describe the art by using the person's name, this is a clue that points out something very valuable about art. We're saying that having a personal voice is inescapably important. The artist who wants to make art at a world-class level must imbue that art with a high level of personal voice. In addition, an artist's personal voice is often referred to as being made up of their vocabulary. In other words, the vocabulary of the artist is what goes into making their personal voice. And their vocabulary has to do with the things they do in their painting. It's the way they handle their color, their shapes, their textures, their edges, and so forth. Hans Hoffmann is known to have said, I am many people, I give you at least three. When we look at Hoffmann's paintings, we see that one of these styles is very light-hearted, very spring-like. Another is very metaphorically deep and expressive on another level. It had pain, angst, anger, and passion. 
The third was more formal and tended to deal with the formal elements and classic painting issues. One of the controversies about um, personal expression or the development of one's personality in painting and uh, in one's art concerns uh, whether one should do it consciously or it should be unconscious or innate. Some people say it should be innate only and some people say no it's conscious. So there's a bit of a controversy here. What I did was uh, went to a lot of my friends who were well-known artists and very accomplished artists and asked them how it happened that they developed their particular personality if it was conscious or unconscious and every single one of them uh, said that they had done it in a very conscious way. My own feeling about it is that the innate thing, the thing that happens naturally uh, happens no matter what so you really don't have to put a lot of undue effort into that uh, side of things. Yet the application of one's consciousness to developing one's personality is important. To try to do it innately only seems to not work so well. It can go on for years and not develop uh, as a personality, as a strong element in the painting. So application of consciousness, paying attention to choices and um, inclinations uh, will shorten the time that it takes to deepen the personality of the painting. I suppose in the long run it boils down to balance, which almost always seems to be the answer. Of course it's possible for it to become overly conscious, which uh, we would generally call uh, contrived, that is a little bit too forced. So my feeling about it is that you should put conscious effort into developing your uh, vocabulary, your personality, but it has to also be driven by who you really are. In other words, all of your conscious choices should be influenced by what you are on the inside, um, your tastes, your inclinations. Until it's developed, every artist searches for their style their personality in painting. And to find it, honesty is very important. You have to look carefully and deeply into who you are and how you're going to express that inner being. There are many aspects that can be used by the artist to create personal expression. Developing a personal approach to composition can often be an identifier of the artist. Edward Hopper often used an L-shape or U-shape composition. Janet Sobel is considered to be the first artist to bring all over non-hierarchical composition to bear in fine art. Jackson Pollock picked up on this idea and took it further. All over, non-hierarchical composition became the main hallmark of Jackson Pollock's voice. Jules Olitsky's compositional voice encompassed all over fields with little in them and energies and forms along the edges. Morris Lewis's compositional voice showed up in symmetrical flowing forms on either side of the painting. How one handles the formal elements, that is to say textures, shapes, paint quality, etc., can also go a long way in creating a personal voice. Vincent van Gogh's voice can be identified because of his thick paint and vibrant colors. Part of Raoul Dufy's voice had to do with his use of line. The use of subject matter 
can also be an important factor in developing one's personal voice. Georgia O'Keeffe was an artist who treated subject matter in a highly personal way. She zoomed in close on flowers. Each painting has a different emotional energy, a different emotional character. Yet each painting is undeniably hers. Another thing that's a strong indicator of personal voice is touch. This has to do with how the artist delivers the paint to the surface, softly, energetically, fast, and delicately are some of the ways that touch can manifest itself. One's overall style choice is another way one's voice can be seen. Each artist's choice of approach carries with it some idea of the artist's philosophy of life. And this certainly impacts your personal voice. Andrew Wyeth chose realism. Ernst Kirchner chose expressionism. And though Picasso used many styles, his main approach was abstraction. Morris Lewis chose to paint non-representationally. And the meanings one chooses to involve oneself with certainly affect one's personal voice. Goya explored social consciousness and extended his reach into the dark side of human nature. Radon explored fantasy and transcendence. Lautrec explored the seamier side of Paris nightlife and human character. Klaus Oldenburg worked with things from everyday life and humor. Franz Klein explored process and angst. Mark Rothko was about simplicity and the mystical. Making real personal choices and bringing them to bear in your work will go a long way in helping to make your painting personal.